play some Sentinels. Oh, fickle fans, come on. Oh, you've been quoted out of context. You must be a famous person now. I am a famous person now. But we're gonna win. Unless the environment kills us. See, I could have waited and We have damage, Dread Warlord boss! I did not think that would work out, but it did. Well done, team. <laughs> welcome, 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 everybody out there in Twitch land. It's Tuesday. It's seven-ish and it's April, so that means Sentinels Live has returned. I know that you guys have been freaking out, like, what am I gonna do on Tuesday nights? There's no Sentinels Live. Oh my goodness! But we're back. Uh, I had a lot of things I was doing, like going to GDC, getting sick from GDC, GDC, trying to get better. John, what have you been doing with your Tuesday nights since we've been off the air? Pretty booked up, solid with Sentinels Live, actually. Wait a minute. You didn't get the memo. Wait just a gosh darn tootin' minute. You're telling me that you have been entertaining these people without me for a whole month? Yeah, we were playing Oblivion and stuff. Uh-oh, the title says Tales from the Archive. Uh-oh, what did I do? That uh, happens. Hang on, let me fix it. Or at least attempt to fix it. <coughs> Excuse me. I am going to attempt... Oh, yeah, title, Tales from the Archive. Sentinels live. If you're already watching it, it probably won't update it, but it'll be updated for when it arrives. Um, I'm going to try and sit on the mute button on my mic here because um, I got the con crud. That's basically when you get sick from going to a convention. Um, and that happened to the me. GDC crud. Yeah, we tried to come up with fun knees, like the Pax Pox was one that we had for a long time. And I tried to make the GD Seasels be a thing, like the GDC measles, the GD Seasels, but everyone was like, stop trying to make fetch happen. So, um, yeah, so that's not a real thing. But, yes, Agent Damage has returned. Uh, I do appreciate, I'm just kidding, I knew that they were still doing you the You should just say, me. I caught GD. <laughs> yeah, I caught GD. That is exactly what happened. <laughs> I caught game <laughs> development. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, Mark and Zach, uh, it is my understanding that they did a fantastic job uh, while I was away. Um, I unfortunately was not able to watch them. Um, they ended up, yeah, G disease, G, G, G diseases. Um, but anyway, uh, I am back now, at least for the foreseeable future. Hopefully, fingers crossed. You never really know what's going to happen when you have three kids under 12 and um, all kinds of other craziness happening. But I'm here today. So thank you for joining us around the digital tabletop while we play Sentinels of the Multiverse. By the way, you're going to see me do this a lot. Where like I convulse and it seems like I should be making noise, but hopefully I'm muted because I have <laughs> this crazy cough happening. Uh, the goal of these streams is to have some fun while showing you how to play the game as well as covering strategies that can help you win. Candelabra Games does believe in civil rights for absolutely everyone and in being as inclusive as we possibly can be. So comments or activity actively working against that goal are not welcome and will not be tolerated. If you enjoy the show, please like, share, follow, subscribe, and be sure to check out the other shows right here at twitch.tv slash Handelabra Games. Uh, we got Dolphins Dive Thursdays at 6 uh, which is, of course, with Mark, who has been on this show as well a bit, a bit over the last month. And Tales from the Archive on Sundays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I don't think there's anything in particular coming up for the next few weeks. But I will mention here that we are actively looking for people to join our stream team right alongside myself and John and Zach and Mark to do One Deck Dungeon streams. Now that One Deck Dungeon is in early access, it's getting better every week or so. Um, we've just, the most recent update added in um, character progression. And what else did it add? Tell me, John. That's the main thing. That was the main thing. All right. Um, we've got another update that's going to be coming out probably sometime in the next week and a half or two weeks, which is going to add things like um, uh, we've got uh, achievements coming probably pretty soon. That's in like the point, was it point seven, point eight, point nine? I don't remember the points. But then we also have a, um, 
what's the 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 final update is going to be the sort of campaign mode kind of thing so a bunch of new interesting fun cool stuff still coming in early access um still no word as to when the final release is going to officially drop but why not buy it now and then you can play it and you can find all the cool stuff as it goes and if you want to stream it let us know yeah we should get some of our own streams going we should try some two-player again yeah definitely so i'm jeremy <clears throat> you can follow me at Mr. J Handle. That's M R J H A N D E L. Joining me as always is John, who you can follow at Migrant P. Just the way it uh, sounds is the way it's spelled. You can always follow the company at Handleabber on Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube. And we are the developers. So you can always be sure to get some insight into the process and sometimes see stuff before anyone else. Is this one of those times, John? This is one of those times. I think this might be one of those times. The, games does, the game does include a tutorial that covers the basics, but we always do our best to explain exactly what we're doing, when we do it, and why. And depending on how long it takes to win or lose, we usually play several games in every two-hour episode. Sentinels is currently available on iOS, Android, as well as PC, Mac, and Linux via Steam. But maybe on some more things soon. Stay tuned for some potential news on that. Um, I had a lot of really great meetings at GDC um, with the idea, you know, one of my main focuses... Foci. One of my main foci at GDC was talking to potential partners who could help us bring Sentinels to one or more home video game consoles. So that is the thing that we are actively working on right now. Um, and I know that a bunch of you answered the, the survey that we put out, which was uh, a lot of really great marketing information that we were looking for that helped me in my meetings with all of these people to talk about whether or not Sentinels would be a success on a console. So thank you for that. Uh, and always in good old analog cardboard and ink. Check out sentinelsdigital.com for more info as well as to download and try the demo absolutely free. All right. I, again, I'm trying really hard to hit the mute every time I cough. If I miss one, I apologize if I blow out your ears. Yeah, Switch. Switch is the one that I would really be excited about. Um, but, you know, Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, all of them are on the table. We would be excited to do any of them, quite frankly. That's all right. right. I had this, this stream I hosted where I just muted Skype and had massive sneezes on the live stream. Uh, so. Whoops. It's classic. All right, so new game. So as many of you have guessed, because you are brilliant and amazing. Are you going people, to go in multiplayer? I am, but I'm, right now I'm showing that the, there's, a, there's an extra deck here in the environments, and that is the Celestial Tribunal. I know that a lot of you have been waiting for the Celestial Tribunal uh, for a long time, because this is a deck that has actually been out in the physical world um, for quite a while, uh, but it's part of Mini Pack 4, and quite frankly, it's not the easiest deck in the world to program. Um, I'm sure David would have a lot of fun stories to tell you about his uh, programming of the C Celestial Tribunal. There's a lot of very interesting interactions in this deck. Maybe not a lot, but there's a few that are like way more interesting than a lot of other decks all put together. Um, so we're going to try out the Celestial Tribunal tonight. No guarantees that it's going to work 100%. We're pretty sure that it will. Uh, but, you know, it's still obviously not out yet. So clearly it is still in testing. So all the usual caveats apply. Um, who should we fight? And who should we fight them with in the Celestial Tribunal, John? Uh, we could go with Choke Point. <coughs> in the same mini pack. Sure. All right, the heroes from that mini pack are not here yet. Not yet. If you want to get a preview of those, Greater Than Games will be doing some previews of that content and Void Guard uh, on the tabletop uh, in about three weeks. Yeah, starting so, near the end of April, they just announced today uh, via Oblivion Kickstarter update. So you should check that out. And if for any of those of you who have been like, when am I going to get to see Benchmark and Stuntman in the video game? The answer has always been the same. Not until you've seen it in the physical world. So once they've started to show it off in the physical world, we're really hoping that we will have them ready in the video game to start showing you. They are not ready to show you yet. It's not like we're holding them back and saying, oh, you just can't see them. They're, they aren't ready in the video game yet, even to be previewed on the stream. But hopefully, maybe by the end of April, that will change. <coughs> Excuse me. Ugh. I get two kinds of colds. If you follow me on Twitter, you know this. I get one cold, which lasts 48 hours, and then I'm back to normal. The second kind of cold I get lasts a month. <laughs> and I cough and cough and cough and cough, and I have that kind of cold this time, and it is really not fun. So I don't uh, think, I think uh, in our meetings, you've been referring to it as saying that you've got number two, and yes. that means something else. I, uh, 
I've got a number two happening. <laughs> Cold number two. You can't have your oblivion until you eat your meat. How can you have any oblivion if you haven't eaten your meat? Exactly. <laughs> All right, so John picks Chrono Ranger. I'm going to pick Munity. Am I going to pick a different Munity? Am I going to stick with a regular Munity? I think I'm just going to stick with regular Munity tonight. And we got Night Mist. And let's see if I'm going to pick I was playing Night Mist earlier and thought maybe we hadn't seen Night Mist on the stream in a while. Yeah, let's see. Um... You know, Scholar is one of my go-tos, so I think I'm going to go with Scholar. All right. Here we are. Boom. Is that great opening shot of the Tribunal? Approaching Earth. What hope do you have? The metal in all things calls to me, and I answer with commands. Think good and hard, partner. I aim to put you down, and I don't miss. All right, so Chrono Ranger opens with Displaced Armory, Eye on the Prize, Hunter and Hunted, and Jim's Hat. Unity has got a Brainstorm, Platform Bot, Raptor Bot, Turret Bot. Night Mist has Call Forth, Mistbound, Oblivion, and uh, Scouring Mists. And uh, Scholar has got Expect the Worst, Flesh to Iron, No When to Hold Fast, and Transmutive Recovery. All right, so yeah, you yeah, are so actually. You can see there was external, the external shot uh, of the Celestial Tribunal in the opening, but when you're fighting, you're actually inside it. You're inside. So. Yep, exactly. All right, so one of the other things I will mention is that talking vibrates my throat, which makes me want to cough more. So, <laughs> so I will actually be endeavoring to be a little bit less loquacious than usual. But you haven't heard me for a month, so any little bit you get is going to be plenty, <laughs> right? All right, so here we go. Well, I start with a hat. So let's go with that. And yeah, maybe I'll just get out good old compounded bow. And start shooting choke point. So yeah, choke point actually has a story relationship with uh, the social tribunal, which is interesting. Um, she ends up uh, stowing away on it after it leaves Earth and tries to take it over and use it for her own purposes. Mm -hmm. So you can learn more about that in the letters page episodes for those characters. That is another thing that places. I'm a month behind on, uh, my letters page listening, mm. unfortunately. I think the last one I listened to was the like Celestial Locations podcast or whatever. So like, I haven't listened to the Voss one. I haven't listened to the – there's like there was a an editor's note that came out. I haven't listened to any of them. Yeah, I'm caught up. At the, I haven't listened to the episode today, but I got caught up over the weekend. Right, robot reclamation. Oh, traveling, I am in a new place now. We didn't mention that. Oh, yeah. Where are you? I am now in Lisbon, Portugal. So it's been uh, it's pretty cool. Just got here on Sunday, so we've been exploring. We're in Alfama, the really old neighborhood. Um, super hilly and tw twisty little streets and steps. It's pretty cool. All right, I don't know. Is it? I don't know that it's worth it to kill one of your equipments just to get out like a platform bot, unless you think you're really looking to get rid of your compounded bow or something. Uh, maybe not this turn. Maybe later. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, John was a little ahead. I was still chilling on the game intro screen, but we're we're all caught up now. Everything's wonderful. I didn't know you didn't click it. Yeah, I was just <laughs> talking and discussing and blah blah blah. And yes, Hankroid, I am playing to the middle of the night, but I'm now actually to the left of you, to the west, because Portugal is in uh, British time. So it is midnight and not 1 a.m. now. So actually for a couple weeks, I it was midnight because um, Europe changes daylight savings a couple weeks later than the U.S. Mm. All right, I think I'm going to call forth and get some relics. Yeah, I think uh, people are talking about the backgrounds. Um, is France the same time? I thought France is uh, Central European time. 
Anyways, uh, yeah, Jennifer's done some this, uh, yeah, Western European guy. Jennifer's been working more on the um, background since you last saw it in the listing party, mm -hmm. I believe. Yep. And they do look so good. And I will say this, too. Um, she has broken ground on the Oblivion environments. Um, so we've been seeing right. we've been seeing some cool work coming from her for like Champion Studio. I don't think I've seen Myrian Refuge yet. I don't think I don't know that she started yeah, in on that. Port Adamant and Port Adamant. Um, Mordengrad, she's been working on as well. Yes, the stuff that was coming from Mordengrad last week was really interesting and cool. I was very excited to see that. <clears throat> All right, so let's see. What do I want to do here? Where's my mute button? All right. All right. Let's see. I kind of want to just hold fast here and just get a bunch of things so that I can be ready to do more stuff later. And that is... All right. Let's see. She flipped a card. I don't remember what it was. Yeah. I'm just going to hold fast. All right. Mortal form to energy. Alchemical redirection. Keep moving. Truth Seeker. Ooh, I don't dismiss anything. All right, one of my favorites. In the far future, Hankard asks, in the far future, when Oblivion will be released, will you do one final listening party for the last environment equals Oblivion music? Um, to my knowledge, we will absolutely be doing a listening party for Oblivion music. Um, yep. I don't see why not. I, can't, I cannot conceive of a reason why we wouldn't do that. So, for sure, you can count on it. And, and again, yeah, it'll be, you know, five environments and then plus um, whatever special thing we're doing for Oblivion. Special thing for Oblivion? What? Who knows? Who knows? Yes. There will definitely be at least one more listening party. I don't know that there would be enough for two more listening parties. So, yeah, it's probably just going to be the one. But... All right. Select the first hero to put a card face down in the villain play area. Uh, actually, wait, we had a card come out. Let's bring that up. Celestial Adjudicator, Tribunal AI, 12 hit points. Reduce damage dealt to environment targets by one. At the start of the environment turn, reveal cards from the top of the environment deck until a trial is revealed. Put it into play. Discard the other revealed card. So we've been talking around this, but if somebody is not familiar with this environment, we should probably just legitimately talk about what happens here. So the Celestial Tribunal is an AI in, in a spaceship that travels around judging civilizations. And it has arrived at Earth to judge whether or not they are worthy to continue existing, right? That's pretty yep. much the thing. And so the cards have a bunch of different kind of things. So these, there are these Tribunal AI cards. There are Trial cards, like Found Wanting and Paragon of Sentience, which uh, some of them get played next to Hero cards and stuff like that. The one we keep talking about is this Representative of Earth, which is a Trial card that when this card enters play, choose a Hero character card from the box and put it into play next to this card set its max hp to 10 if that hero is incapacitated the earth is sentenced to destruction game over if this card leaves play put the hero back in the box now we have a digital box <laughs> of course but yes uh there was a question there does representative earth pull from active packs only what would you like to say to that john uh i'm not sure what active packs only means but i'm assuming um, it means installed or owned yeah, packs. you can Use heroes that you have. Yeah. All right. Um. robots yet so we can get rid of robot like reclamation <laughs> oh yeah just as he says i think active is more relevant in multiplayer uh in multiplayer you can choose from any of the heroes that are available in that multiplayer games expansion packs um so the um, the intersection of all of the 
players expansion packs that right. makes sense um and then any variants that anyone has unlocked the union of the variants that people have mm. so basically the same as when you set up a multiplayer game select the first year to put oh we gotta do this again Yeah, this is coming from... Uh, is this the same thing? She played it twice? Oh, she did play it twice. Yeah. Oh, she played it and then it revealed itself. Right. <laughs> uh, Man, I choke point. Choking us out. Powered self-repair. And she's healing up. And she's definitely going to flip next turn. <laughs> Union, fancy math words. Mm -hmm. Or, or Man, logic I'll words. Hunter and hunter now. <laughs> I guess there's no bounties, so I can play it and it won't do anything. And I can shoot choke point for a tiny amount of damage. Janna Gro, it is, it is not possible to game. catch colds over the net. Uh, Nougat Bar says that, that environment music is so nice and chill with a bit of ominousness. Good old Jean Marc. Amen. Yeah, Lou Dolphin says, or logic words, which is what I said, implying that logic is not math. I would argue that math is logic, but logic is not math. So, like in the Venn diagram of things, like there's logic and there's math, and more of math is inside of logic than logic is inside of math, in my opinion. And granted, it has been literally more than a decade since I took a class in logic. But it wasn't in the math department, so I can say that much. That's all I'm going to say about that. All right, Unity, play a card. Um, yeah, I'll play my supply crate. Yeah, I'll draw another supply crate. I like that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hey, not going to choose hat or supply crate. Blow up the supply crate. Yeah. I mean, I don't really need the hat. It's true. I don't have any cards. So. You can blow up the hat if you want. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that. And we'll get the platform five out. All right. Um, I have played in the Celestial Tribunal a grand total of once in my life, and that was like six hours ago. So. Um, I'm going to rely on you to tell me, like, is it worth it to try and kill these Celestial Adjudicators, or what What should I be just focusing on Choke Point here? It's the environment that can kind of pile up, but we should just focus Choke Point, I think. I'm not too worried about the environment right now. Okay, cool. Plus, we want the, that card will play more environment cards, so we'll see more. <laughs> more yeah, we'll see more cool stuff, so that's good. All right. So I didn't get... Uh, what I wanted, but I can play something else. Let's play Healer Slash and see what happens. Enlightenment. Sure, I'll play that too. Would the Scholar like to draw some cards? Sure. Oh, you have a whole bunch of cards. I have a bunch of cards, but I'm always happy to have more. I thought you had oh, you had discarded I, all your one-shots, but you didn't have that many. Okay. Yeah, and I... I really do need the cards then. I knew when to hold fast early in the game, so... Then, yeah, those are for Chrono Ranger. Yeah, so since a lot of you are tuning in, I'm seeing like more people just sort of arriving and being like, oh, cool, cool stuff you're looking at. I will mention something that I mentioned at the top of the stream, which is uh, if you're not playing One Deck Dungeon, you should be, but if you are playing One Deck Dungeon and you're loving it and you could see yourself playing it, oh, I don't know, once a week for approximately two hours and playing it in front of the world of Twitch, uh, get in touch with us. Head over to handlelobber.com slash contact and let us know that you want to join the stream, the stream team. We are actively looking for people to head up a one deck dungeon show right here on our channel. So um, if that's the thing that sounds interesting to you, uh, get in touch, let us know. 
All right. Um, don't dismiss anything is in my hand, which is a thing that I love to do because it's so fun and so random. Sure. And we all have so many hit points right now. It's like, why wouldn't we do this thing? Temporal grenade. Uh, who am I? Unity? Yes. Be a bot, be a bot, be a bot. Yeah! Be, it is be a, a bot. bot! It's be a bot! Good times. Uh, always dangerous for night mist, but hey, Master Max. <coughs> and we get an expect the worst. Interesting. Ah, oh, man. If only I could have gotten that alchemical redirection out, too. Mm. All right. Yeah, I guess I might as well just like, be the one. So I'll probably get some. Well, actually, I'm not going to get some damage because of expect the worst. Eh, but it's fine. Whatever. All right, found wanting. Card ball. All right, so let's. Oh, and there's the representative of Earth. All right, so before we do this, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's bring up that found wanting and see what that is. Trial. Play this card next to a villain target, not next to a trial. If there are no valid targets, destroy this card. If the target next to this card leaves, play, destroy this card. When this card is destroyed, play the top card of the environment deck. So this is sort of like a villain thingy happening here but here comes representative earth so let's bring that up because this is the one that everybody yes i see people in the chat yes this is the one you all <laughs> want to see trial when this card enters play choose a hero character card from the box and put it into play i already read it and they get 10 10 hit points so let's take a look at the ui here so we've got first choose a deck so we got absolute zero arjanata bunker captain cosmic etc 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 john any thoughts on who we should pick do you want to let the chat vote Sure. Vote for representative of Earth. <coughs> we can have them choose the deck first, and then the character, then the right. character card. Well, yeah. So that's so that's the thing. Is so yeah. Oh, so oh, Captain Cosmic, Captain Cosmic, Captain Cosmic. All right, great. So the way that this works is you first pick a character, and then you pick the variant. So, um, and it looks like, yeah, we got Requital, Requital. I, th I think it's, it's fine, it's Requital. So, um, uh, you can show uh, Speedy Ulrak that you can choose Unity, but you have to choose a variant that isn't already that in play. That is not already in play, exactly, right? So there you see, you've got, we've got Golem Unity and we've got um, uh, Termination Unity right there. So, all right, so Captain Cosmic and then Requital. So this is, you know, obviously we're the developers, so we have all of the characters and so that's a thing. But as was asked earlier, um, if you only have, let's say, Rook City, Infernal Relics, and Mini Pack 4. If that's all you have installed and you don't have... That's all you've got in your box. Yeah, that's all you have in your box, and so that is what you will have available to choose. So that is, that's the way that that works. And you have to have the variant unlocked to be able oh, to... Oh, interesting. Choose. So I clicked on Skyscraper, and of course this would make perfect sense when you think about it, but there are six choices because the, she has two yep. normals, two tinies, and two huges, and you get to pick just a single one of them. That's really interesting. Awesome. Okay, cool. There's more choices on the Sentinels. Uh, yeah. This is why we split up the screen into this two sections, because there's like over 100 cards if you have them all at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Peter Rock says, this is nice UI for Oblivion. Yeah, funny how that works, that there are other parts of Sentinels coming up that are going to require you to pick characters and variants and blah de blah de blah de blah All right, so Captain Cosmic Requital is now in play with 10 hit points. All you, right. And you left out the rest of the card. Oh, yeah, sorry. Important. Well, I had read it earlier, so I didn't want to read it through again. Uh, now it's getting destroyed. <laughs> if that hero is incapacitated, the Earth is sentenced to destruction. Game over. All right. So stripped resources comes out, which destroys all environment cards. So that's no big deal. Yeah. So Kid Flash Impulse asks: In multiplayer, is it any Actually, hero? Actually, the order does matter because oh, okay. we want found wanting to be destroyed first. Because when this card is destroyed, play the top card, and it could be something that doesn't look good for us. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So Kid Kid Flash Impulse. We did cover this very briefly, but um, when it comes to how you can choose this. Um, when you set up a multiplayer game, you can select which um, uh, which expansions are required for that multiplayer room <coughs> so that someone who, like, for instance, doesn't have Infernal Relics can't join your room. So if they don't have Infernal Relics, they can't join it, and therefore that card, you know, cards from Infernal Relics would not be available in that dialogue. Uh, okay, yeah, Unity. Uh, but then if you have 
um, when it comes to the choice of which variant, it can be any variant that any character has unlocked. Is that correct? Any player has unlocked. Any player has unlocked. Right. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So if what about unlocks? If only one player has Ca Captain Cosmic or Quital, the answer would be you can still use that one because that player has it unlocked. I think we answered it in there behind. Yeah. You no. Know, yeah. We answered it. Um. Yeah, this is this is all the talk about logic and math and all the stuff from earlier. The qu the question of uh, the union versus the intersection versus blah de blah de blah. <coughs> all right. Um. All right. So now she's flipped, and so uh, she increases damage to targets. That have cards in our play area and, and get and reduce damage from them. So we can try to maybe get rid of Chrono Rangers. Yeah, so that's that, a, that was what I was gonna her. say. <laughs> let's let's maybe work on Chrono Ranger first. Hey, expect the worst. Save the scholar. And I can get a sudden contract. Sure. And Hunter and Hunted is coming into play here. Well, that was a very short-lived representative of Earth. It was. <laughs> I will destroy this to draw a construction pylon and a construction pylon. Yeah. I heard you like pylons. I heard you like pylons, so I put a pylon in your pylon. So I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna play both this Raptor Bot and this Turtle Bot. Inspired Repair. And so the platform bot will hit some choke point, and the raptor bot will hit some choke points. It's a pretty good raptor button. Yep. All right, let's go with Amulet of the Elder Gods, I think. That's always nice. And I'm going discard. I want to draw some more. Now you're at maximum HP. You don't want to be. Wah wah. All right. Um. What's her damage dealing situation? She just does like one damage. Yeah. Besides whatever she does on cards. Like one damage event. It's a big one. Five damage. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna all chemical redirection here. Like, get myself down a little bit, and then maybe, I was gonna Truth Seeker, but I feel like... You could save Alchemical for when Chrono Ranger needs the help with Hunter and Hunted. Yeah, I guess that's true. Let's see, Scar deals one target to melee draw. Yeah. I do have a decent I mean, number of cards, I mean, point's gonna hit you with redirection or not, so. Another flush to iron. Take yeah, Walker. How did she have this much stuff in her play area? She stole it all. Stole her one shots. Yeah, two consecutive oh. newfound powers. Yep. yep. Another representative of Earth. So we need a new vote. All right. Vote yeah. for the new representative. It's got to be a different one than from before. That it doesn't have to be in the game, but that's our rule. Here. All right, so let's bring up that call to judgment. When this card enters play, search the environment trash and deck for a representative Earth and put it into play. One hero may use the power on the hero character card in this play area now, then shuffle the card in the environment uh, and the environment trash in the environment deck. So that's that is very interesting. 
All right, Skyscraper won the vote with three. It was very close. Bunker and Sentinels also had two. Yeah, but we got a Skyscraper, then we got a Tiny Skyscraper, right, then we got so a huge which Skyscraper. skyscraper? All right, so it's going to be a skyscraper. Tiny normal. That's not helping, Citizen. <laughs> tiny, huge. Right. huge. I see the word tiny, tiny twice. Oh, right, and then we also have to deal with extreme versus normal. I think extreme looks like extreme tiny. Yep, fine. Extreme tiny. Extreme tiny it is. Boom. Stream Tiny won't do, do too much for the power usage, but... All right, so okay. then select a hero to use the power, and now this hero is using the power that's on Tiny Extreme Skyscraper, yes? Yes. Yes, okay. Is there... So, I don't actually know... Ground really. Ranger can use it because he has damage boosts. Okay, good. So let's do that. Extra large with coke. And so Crown Ranger is going to use his power, so Crown Ranger is going to be the one who deals the damage. So he gets uh, his own damage boosts. And then it says either destroy Link or switch to your normal character card, which don't make sense with Chrono Ranger. So. He's already normal size. Come on. <laughs> I wonder. That might say something funny with guys. I haven't tried that. Material you have upheaval. To discover that for yourself. So my local liquor store had a, had a deal on uh, the Glen Morangy Quinta Ruban, which is, of course, oh, yeah. the 12 years aged in port casks, which I'm very excited about. Because as we know, I like my scotch aged in non-scotch casks. That's what I like. All right, so choke point is dealing each non-villain target to projectile damage. All right, is there uh, anything that's gonna help if we do the B-Bot in some particular order or no? Yeah, with the B bot, you could Get rid of the destroy the representative of Earth card if you wanted. Um, you could destroy the face down card uh, that she has as well, which might be a better choice. Mm. So I don't think the order will matter otherwise, because I'm just going to redirect it with. So that implies a fun interaction if the hero you're playing is base skyscraper. That's right. Yes. Base skyscraper <coughs> can get a little bit extreme. All right, so destroy a card. Yeah, get rid of this flipped one. Get the representative around. It'll make it more interesting, if nothing else. I will make choke point hit herself. The Pycro says, I find it odd that a microscopic Therathian is standing trial for Earth. Hey, I mean, the will of the people. There you go. <laughs> interesting i think there's a there was a might have been a bug there it was showing a plus she would have done a plus one to skyscraper because skyscraper because there was a celestial tribunal card there but that's not correct it's gonna note there choke point damage boost should not apply to representatives character unless their deck is in the game because that character, that hero, like lives in the environment, so I think it was giving that boost because the character lives in the environment. Mm. All right, select a equipment card in each hero play area, put them face down in the villain play area. Man. And now we can destroy a card. Keep destroying to Crown of Major cards, yeah, I guess. That's what I was thinking.
Pricey Provinces wonders if there's a special lost screen for losing the tribunal. I wonder. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. Hmm. Doesn't sound like a thing we would do. If there is, that's not something we're going to show. All right. Let's whack choke point here. Now I imagine completionist guys is representative. Yep. <laughs> that is definitely a thing. <laughs> that we have not coded yet. <laughs> yeah. Completionist guys is not in there yet. He is fancy and weird and problematic. <laughs> that is for sure. Sure, I will inspire this repair. So that's why I will just do this. No bots. No bots. All right. Let's go with the Heedless Lash. Oblivion. Oh yeah, my amulet's gone. Good choke point, stole it. I don't want to play Oblivion with just one villain target. You know when to turn loose. Oh, I do know. all heroes sing if they use Arjunatus' powers? That is not a thing no. we're going to do. <laughs> it would be neat, but man. No, we're not recording 60 we're not <laughs> different versions. <coughs> Sorry. All right. Um, right. Let's see here. Try to adjust my position here, searching a little. Because I like searching. <laughs> what you doing, Jeremy? I'm reading my cards, trying to decide what I want to do. Uh, um. Yeah, I'm just going to do this. Not using Truth Seeker? Nah, I figure, like, she's pretty low. Like, if we keep pounding on her, we can get rid of her pretty quick, I feel like. We would have done more damage with Truth Seeker. Oh, really? Oh, stupid. All right, Celestial Chamber. Let's see what that has, has to do with the price of whatever. All right, Celestial Chamber. At the start of the environment turn, move one Tribunal AI card from the environment trash into play. At the end of the environment turn, if there are no trials in play, play the top card of the environment deck. Choke point is trying to destroy the representative. Price of chickens in Hong Kong, says Nugabar. Yeah, I was going to say the price of rice in China, but then I was like, that is something that I have not heard somebody say since I was like eight. And I was trying to process in my head, like, is that a racist thing? And I couldn't figure it out, so I decided not to say it. But I guess it all I've came been out. Disconnected. Anyway. What? I'm trying to 
Well, How dare you sorry. disconnect from me? I don't know. See if this rejoins. Yep. There we go. And you're back. Yeah, it probably is. All right, let's get another bounty. <laughs> Bravely, he ran away. He lived to fight another day. <laughs> so speaking of holy hand grenades, anybody see Ready Player One yet? I did. I did not. It's strangely divisive, this movie. Apparently the book was divisive, too. I really enjoyed the book. A lot of people say that it was the worst thing ever written. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, of course. Uh, I liked the book, and I also liked the movie. Was it was it Citizen Kane? It was not. But uh, I enjoyed it for what it was. And I saw it in crazy big screen 3D, so... Oh, Take Walker didn't even see A Wrinkle in Time. I also saw A Wrinkle in Time. Um... I'm just gonna, while we're waiting for my group P to reconnect, um, here's here's my rant about Wrinkle in Time. I think a lot of people complained about A Wrinkle in Time. I think that that movie literally breaks film criticism because the movie is com like totally confounding and it makes no sense and it is confusing and it is inspiring and it is whatever, which is what the book A Wrinkle in Time always was. So I think that they did an absolutely perfect job of adapting, quote unquote, adapting A Wrinkle in Time uh, to be a movie because I think it did exactly what the book did for me, which is when I left it, I had more questions than when I came in, and that's exactly what the book did. And I thought it was fantastic and I enjoyed it profusely. My daughter turned to me at the end of it and said, I think this might be my favorite movie ever made. <laughs> now, she's only 12, so she's got more movies to see, but, <laughs> um, but that was enough for me to be like, yep, I'm on board. Crybot, Hasty Augmentation. Right, good. Ooh, Hasty Augmentation with Chrono Ranger would be really nice. Yep. Um, Alright, so what do you think? Hit uh, Skyscraper? I'm not gonna yeah. hit Skyscraper. That's ridiculous. Who would do, who would do such a thing? Maybe you could cry about it. Yeah. Ooh, choke point. We are so close. Choke point, you going down. So, Take Walker, let me just spoiler alert you here. I have reread the book of A Wrinkle in Time with my 12 year old. At the time, she was like 10 and a half. Uh, it will not make more sense. There are things about that book that I think are designed to not make sense. And if you just sort of let it wash over you, that is what makes it enjoyable. Like, I remember loving that book and that whole series when I was younger. I read them all. I read them all again. And then I, when someone asked me to explain what happened to them, like, a couple years later, I was like, I have no idea. And then I went back to them. But it was, yeah. Like, they are just, their, their entire purpose in this universe is to make you interested in trying to figure things out that may or may not be figure outable. I think that's that's really what a wrinkle in time is. And I think at that it excels. Sorry, I don't really have anything to add because I've never seen it or read it. <coughs> and there we go. So, point, you have been judged and found wanting. I really want my wife to do her hair in like choke point hair <laughs> she did like a bright pink streak at one point um but she like did it in a place where she could like comb her regular hair over it so that when she was in like pickup at uh, the school people wouldn't have to see it if they didn't if she didn't want them to but i think she would look fierce with some like white like purple pink slash black hair that would be awesome so and glowing white eyes and pink lightning ah she doesn't need all that in the metal arms <laughs> the cough of loss Sorry, I forgot to. I, I must have forgotten to mute. I apologize. We have won. We win. The Celestial right. Tribunal is no more. But I have a feeling that the C Celestial Tribunal is not going to give up that easily. I think the Celestial Tribunal is going to go for another round. And okay. now we just have to decide who we're going to fight against. So let's see. 
haven't we played in a while? I wouldn't even know, because I haven't been here for a month. Um... Yeah, let's go, let's go core game. All right. Susan Don, I think she would be interested in appearing in a court of justice. Mm-hmm. Pleading her case. Expatriate. An expatriate's a handy sidekick. All right, not someone I played in the last game, but someone who I actually know how to play relatively well. I think I'm going to bring a Tachyon, but which Tachyon is the question. What does Freedom 5 do again? Uh-oh. Oh, I disconnected out. John here. popped out of the room. I don't know. It's DSL here. It's not the greatest internet connection. Works okay, but sometimes it just stops working. Yeah, our internet at my house has been acting really schizophrenic lately, and it's been driving me a little crazy. I have, like, four access points around my house. You would think I would have good coverage, but no. We still lose c connection on my Apple TVs with shocking regularity. I'm back, and there's two of me. What could possibly go wrong? I'm only yeah, seeing I'm going, I'm going to quit. <laughs> and come back. All right. So, yeah, I'm trying to think. Let's see. The other movies I've seen recently, um, I think the last three movies I saw in the theaters were um, Ready Player One, which I loved. Well, loved is maybe a strong word. I really enjoyed. I thought that, you know, having read the book, they changed a lot from the book to the movie. Um, which they kind of had to because the book itself was kind of unfilmable. Um, uh, Does the guy have one really long leg in the movie or is that just the poster? <laughs> it's just the poster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wrinkle in Time, which was also really good, um, but also, again, very... Honestly, they kept more from the book than I thought they would be able to, which I thought was somewhat impressive. And I think before that, the last movie I saw... Oh, oh, ah, I forgot. I, when I was at GDC um, on the Friday after everything had shut down and I had nothing else to do, I went to see um, uh, Pacific Rim Uprising. Ooh. Which I enjoyed. Um, I thought it was, like, just a little bit not as good as the first one. And I've, it's interesting because, again, there's a lot of people that are like, it was ever so slightly better than the first one, or it was ever so slightly worse than the first one. I don't know. Uh, it was a lot of, like, giant robots fighting giant monsters, and that's fun. So That's cool. Yeah. Uh, the last new movie I've seen, really new movie I've, I've seen is Black Panther, but we yeah. watched uh, The Shape of Water um, last week, which was really oh. good. My wife is trying to sell me on seeing The Shape of Water, and despite the fact that I generally, speaking of Pacific Rim, really dig Guillermo, de, Guillermo del Toro, The Shape of Water just does not call out to me. I don't know it's really good. I think uh, I think you might like it. Yeah? All right. Well, maybe. It's really like a really tight like story that's like very focused in on a small thing, like a small story like that would be like in any other you know any other approach would it would be a totally different approach that would be like um more like pacific rim i guess then hmm uh so i'm just not able to get in here <clears throat> well that's not great janagro says um where do you go after canceling the apocalypse well <laughs> As those of us who are fans of, like, for instance, Futurama know, just because the apocalypse has been canceled, that doesn't mean it can't be brought back in direct to streaming movies. <coughs> so, you might have canceled the apocalypse, but it might get a reprieve. And that is what happens with Pacific Rim Uprising. Honestly, I really dug what, um, what's his name? Finn. What's the actor's name? From... Star Trek? Star Wars? Yeah, Finn from Star Wars. I can't, for some reason. Uh, Boyega. Is it John? John Boyega, I want to say? Um, I, I thought he did... What he did there was actually a really interesting um, flip. Because I think the, the vast majority of people probably only know him as Finn from Star Wars. Uh, but what he does 
in uh, Pacific Rim is very different from that, and I thought that that was really fun. So, yeah, I'm not having a good time here trying to connect. And I got to see it because I was in San Francisco. I got to see it in IMAX 3D, which um, the only other movie I've ever seen in real, actual IMAX 3D was uh, Prometheus, which I enjoyed at the time, but has not aged well, in my opinion. Um, I also that was also in San Francisco. That was with me. Didn't you watch it there with me? Did we see it together? We might have. I think so. We're at uh, WWDC maybe or GDC. It was yeah. I was there for either for one of those, and I was like, oh, we've got a couple hours to kill, so I went and saw it on like the big crazy seventy foot screen. Yeah, and yeah, Prometheus. The main thing about Prometheus that bothered me was that you should run to the side if a giant wheel <laughs> is rolling towards you. Yes, that is definitely a thing. <laughs> All right, so your internet uh, yeah, is not I helping? Cannot, I'm just getting timeout disconnected. Let's see. It is just not working. Are our websites and stuff working? That's not great. Not really either, also. Not like, so By the way, there's a new DNS. There's a new DNS service out there if anybody's looking for a new DNS if you're having issues, which is 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. Um, I've recently switched over everything here to the new DNS, um, and I think it might be worth giving it a try. Anyway, so what I was saying about Prometheus is that I just recently watched uh, on HBO Go or HBO Now or whatever. I just watched oh. whatever the other one is. Connected. Alien. Do you still have a game up? I still have a game up. Freedom 5608. Oh, and now I'm disconnected again. <laughs> and you're disconnected again. Um, Let me try uh, tethering and see. Yeah, they're asking, how can he still be connected in Skype? Well, And I'm know. not streaming Kid Flash Impulse. Jeremy a is socket streaming. is a thing, I guess. I like the word socket DNS because thing. when you say it, it sounds like something else. All right, Lou Dolphin, enough out of you. Um, I just saw... What is it? What what was the most recent one? Oh, yeah, Alien. My phone is on edge, so I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Dennis. Um, Alien. What? Why can't I think of it? What was the new Alien? That was like the sequel to Prometheus, but still the prequel to whatever the other stuff is. Alien. Covenant. Alien Covenant. That's what it's called. There you go. I watched that and I was like, <laughs> eh. I think I fell asleep in the middle and had to watch the second half of it again later which is the thing that happens to me a lot these days. It was all right, I guess. I that this issue is DNS, but I can try it. I'm using Google DNS, which is usually pretty good. Yeah, I switched from it from Google DNS to um, whatever this new 1.1.1.1 is. So far, it's yes, been good. Yes, from Player. That's the one. I will try that and let's try launching again and see. Yeah, let's see what else. Uh, Black Panther was great. Um, there is some interesting commentary happening on the internet about why Black Panther is bad, and it's not probably for the reasons why you think. So maybe look into that. I think Le I want to say Leslie King the third. I want to say that was the guy who was talking about it. Um, something to do with, like, the idea that somebody who was a CIA agent being a good guy in a movie called Black Panther is a little disingenuous. So maybe look into that. I thought it was an interesting take on it. Uh, I definitely enjoyed it. My kids liked it a lot. Um, what else have I seen lately? All right. Let's, oh, that says I'm not connected. Connect yeah, Jeremy, both. falling asleep is a sign from the universe not to watch a movie. Yeah. Oh, Hankroyd says, uh, watching A Quiet Place, the teaser really got me into that movie. Um, so, A Quiet Place, the trailer for that played before Black Panther, and my son, who is incredibly sensitive, refused to go see Star Wars a second time because he was worried that that trailer would play. That trailer quite possibly scarred him for life. He is not into scary movies. Or scary anything, really. And that trailer, he was like... I was like, hey, let's go see Last Jedi again. And my daughter was like, yep, I'm on board. And my son was like, 
uh, I'm gonna have to sit through the trailer, so I'm gonna have to take a pass on that. Thanks. <laughs> and I was like, oh no. Uh, Jeremy, you need to quit out and start a new game. Quit out and start a new game. All right, I will do that. All right, let's see. Citizen Dawn, Solicitor Tribunal, Expatriate, and Tachyon. All right. Uh, menu. Online multiplayer. Am I joining your this free, your Freedom Five, or is that was that was my Freedom Five? No, create new game. New game. Don't right. join the old game. Don't join the old game. All right, I will not join the old game. I am in Justice Comics Forty One. I might be joining. Nope, not, not Unity. Yet. Hey, all right. I am going to choose setback. Yeah, Menzer is talking about how the A Quiet Place trailer played in front of a bunch of kids' movies. Yeah, I don't know who decided that that would be playing in front of those movies, but that was not an okay decision. Oh, and then I choose Legacy and my picture's not on it, but we'll see what happens. Uh, America's now Greatest? There. Okay. Right. Weird. <laughs> All right. You are no heir to my power, and there's no daughter of mine. Be gone. Just because you have power doesn't mean you're invulnerable. Come on! Come on! I like think that should be, you are no heir to my hair, and that's no <coughs> daughter of mine. Just because you have hair doesn't mean you're invulnerable. Come on. Yeah. I definitely think that, like... $3,000 suit, yeah. and you're invulnerable. Come oh, on. oh, 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 right. Because the woman in the $3,000 purple hair and the and, and the assault rifle is going to... Come on! Come on! Yeah. And I disconnected before the game started. That's usually bad. That's a great what? sign. <laughs> I think that bodes well for this game. Yeah, something is not going well here. They're rebooting all of the routers in Europe right now. But not the ones that serve Skype, apparently. No, Skype's doing fine. Yeah, that's the irony, is that Skype is doing great, which is, yeah. by by all means, like the way more bandwidth-intensive application. But for some reason, our little... Yeah, getting disconnected before the game started is usually not good. It's a tricky state. Uh, it's so something's happening. Cause you gotta have purple hair. Have you tried turning it off and back on again? <laughs> oh. says now my rejoin button just disappeared I have tried turning it off again a lot of times there are no cables to wiggle I will try quitting out and restarting and seeing if it joins the game and then I will try putting the phone in the window to get a signal See if that works. Oh, Lisbon, what kind of internet nonsense do you have for us? Apparently, not as good as Malta, which is surprising because Malta is known for being terrible internet wise. Awesome, uh, everywhere else wise. Well, maybe not like political corruption wise. It's not good for that. Ah. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm going to BRB. All right, John is going to be our B. So I will attempt to keep everybody entertained without coughing in your ears too much. So, yeah, but beyond those four movies that I've just listed, which are Black Panther, Pacific Rim Un Uprising, Ready Player One, and Wrinkle in Time, what did I miss in the last few months that was worth seeing? 
that's all I've seen in theaters recently. I mean, obviously we've got, you know, coming up, we've got a bunch of great stuff. We've got Infinity War, Deadpool 2, Solo. Uh, we'll see if that's going to be good or not. I have no idea. Um, I'm definitely interested to see what that's going to be. Oh, it! Oh, my God. My kids are obsessed with it. They keep asking about it. Um, obviously, I'm not going to let them watch it. But I actually have the original it um, uh, miniseries on DVD because I loved it from way back when. Don't misunderstand me. I understand that it has not aged well. Uh, but I'm very interested to watch the new, the, the updating. And yes, I think it is interesting to see that they're going to do, they kind of split it where they were like, oh, we're going to do the kid part in one movie and then we'll do the adult part in another movie instead of sort of going back and forth between them. All right. I'm going to try to tether now. So I might disconnect from Skype. Okay. John's going to try and tether. Yeah. Uh, the book as it, as it exists, the book of it is kind of unfilmable. I mean, they definitely did not do the ending in the in the original miniseries the way that it's done in the book and i'm assuming i haven't seen it but i'm assuming they didn't do it in the mo in the current movie that just came out because how could they if they didn't do the adult version the adult half of the story or whatever oh uh, do you hear me? i hear you you're still okay. you're, oh. you're frozen I'm back on... on the regular wi-fi I... oh to put me back on the regular wi-fi but i did turn off video i wonder if that was potentially being a problem Oh, like Skype was sucking up everything? Yeah. Yeah, on Skype right now, I just see a frozen picture of you as you were moments ago. Yeah, it's still not connecting. I tried to tether and it didn't work. I'm going to try again. Yeah, we'll be relegating to pretend John. That is definitely a thing. I'm actually very excited that I ended up um, being able to stay at the office and stream from here because I'm on like a gigabit pipe here. So um, the All ability right. for I us really to stream is now. he's really tethered now. Let's see if Sentinels works. I had to move my computer closer to where my phone is, I think, a little mm -hmm. bit. Steam was able to sync your files. That's fine. Hey, would you like to rejoin? Okay. Oh, I heard the sound. Hey, look at that. The, the agents of stream angle. face their greatest Ooh. threat yet, Lisbon. The internet. The internet. All right, so it seems like John is in the game. <coughs> He's frozen in Skype, but that's fine. Uh, Expatriate opens with an assault rifle, a reload, submachine gun, and unload. Setback has got a cash out, fumbling fool, uh, high risk behavior, and uncharmed life. Uh, Tachyon has got lightning reflexes, pushing the limits, research grant, and sonic vortex. And uh, America's greatest legacy has got a danger sense, inspiring presence, takedown, and thought. All right, let's start the game and see what happens. Citizen Lisbon. There it is. All right, we get anvil and hammer, because that's always useful. And we get battery and healing lights. Well, that's a, at least a reasonable time to get healing light, because she can't do anything with it. All right, so... I actually need a quick refresher. Reduce damage health to citizens by one. <coughs> All right, this isn't the villain's version of Hammer and Anvil. I always get those mixed That's up. Right. I mean, it is them, though. It is them, but it's like, oh, is one of them going to bring the other one back? And it's like, well, yes, well, yes, one of them is, but it's not. It's, a, it's yeah, so like, it's like similar mechanics, but not exactly the same. So, All right. I mean, so, that mechanic is the same. Yes, that mechanic is the same, but, like, I don't have to worry about them putting out, like, a Bastion or whatever. 
All right, so I think I'm going to open with an assault rifle, probably. What does battery do? Yeah, I'm not worried about battery. It's anvil and hammer that are the problem. All right, so I'm going to assault rifle, and I'm going to hit anvil and hammer and citizen dawn. Yeah, makes sense. Oh, shotgun. All right, let's go get up to some high risk behavior and play a random card. I gotta tell you, like, when. So, because Citizen Dawn is one of the very first villains that we ever got artwork from Adam for, it was one of the things that, like, was very instructive to me because I'm not a visual artist. And when I got when we got this artwork and I saw that she has blonde hair, but there's literally like purple and blue and green streaks in her hair. That was one of the things that like showed me that like, oh my goodness, like finding out how to use complementary colors to call out the things that you want is a thing that I just don't understand. And I was so impressed with what Adam has done with some of these character cards, some of these character artworks, I should say. Um, because I remember in, specifically when this one came in, and I was like, wait, is that blue and green? What? But it really looks like blonde if you just look at it kind of sideways. And I was like, ah, oh, that's so cool the way that he's done that. So anyway, all yeah, right. Brittany does a lot of that sort of thing in her paintings. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, if I took classes in it, I would probably get it. But that's not a thing I've ever done. So, all right. I have no things in my trash. So, and let me guess, yeah, just put the research grant out. But I think I'm going to experiment. Anyway, on myself. Yes. All right, so they won't do anything, but you get first in your trash. Oh, neither one of them do anything? Oh, that's a bar. Well, well. Yeah, burst in my trash is good for my Sonic Vortex or maybe some other things that I might get. Sucker Punch and a Sucker Punch. Well, I could give her to Citizen sucker Hammer. Sucker Punches are good. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, I think Inspiring Presence is going to be good for taking these guys out next turn. Nice. Because we could take, if we used Assault Rifle, we could destroy Hammer, but um, it won't. Anvil will just bring Hammer back. So. Right. Yeah. At full hit points. Uh, I think it would still make sense to use Assault Rifle and hit Anvil, Dawn, and Anvil and Dawn, though. Okay. Want. Sure. Or would you rather experiment? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, let's experiment. Why not? Right. As you wish. Ooh. A good hypersonic assault will actually get through. A reload, wrong time and place, supersonic response, and legacy ring. Not terrible. Oh, right, and I get to play a card. Oh, oh, hang on a second here. What do I got? I have two bursts in my trash. If I hit Anvil, is there any way to get Anvil out of play? I don't think you have enough damage. Yeah, actually, you, yeah. If you play lightning reflexes, then you can use sonic vortex and supersonic fonts, and you'll still play the hypersonic assault that's waiting to be played. Oh, nice! All right, so we'll do this. All right, so so sorry, say that again. So supersonic response. Supersonic response. And hit anvil. <coughs> and sonic vortex. Nice. And you can hit says and Don. Also. I wouldn't probably hit battery. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, I know. We're trying to think about like how many citizens are we trying yeah. to get in the trash. You can hit hammer though, and he'll be killed. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, and then hypersonic is gonna hit everything. You should hit anvil first. 
Ow. If we lose by one hit point, it's because of that. All right, Celestial Executioner comes out. I don't think we got that last game, so let's pop that open and see what that is. <coughs> this is a Tribunal AI card. At the start of the environment turn, this card deals each target next to a trial three energy damage. If no targets are dealt damage this way, reveal cards from the top of the environment deck until a trial is revealed. Put it into play. Discard other revealed cards. Yeah, <laughs> Tron's frozen face is perfect for lines like that. <laughs> yes, it is. Discard right. two cards. Two cards. Um, yeah. Uh, I have no ammo in my trash. Yeah, I would probably keep the guns. Yeah, I'm just gonna get rid of both of those. Probably not gonna play Fumbling Fool. Well, at least not right now, because I don't want her to flip faster. But... I don't have a lot of tokens. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of these ones that need a lot of tokens to be useful. Uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely want to get rid of one of those. Do I want to get both of them? Uh, I guess, yeah. yeah you don't want Hypersonic to is better. You want first in your trash. That was a pretty good round. Now we can just shoot Don. Says and Don to death. I like that idea. All right. So in that case, I'm probably gonna tactical shotgun. Double high risk behavior? Sure, why not? So risky! Ooh. Yeah, Nougat Bar says I always flipped on ASAP. That was like that was my go-to strategy when I first started playing this game. Was that I would like try to flip her and then flip her back as fast as possible because then you don't have to worry about it. But John uh, brought me around to the idea of trying to kill her before she flips. Which is a very different way to look at it. Uh, yes, I've got enough HPs, that's fine. I do different things depending on the game situation, but not flipping her is a very good way to go if you can manage it. Yeah, all right, let's see what we get here. I, yeah, like I wonder if I should try to get two guns with Expatriate, because I do have Unload. Where's uh where's none left with the um percentages? With the stats. Yeah, with the <laughs> stats. Yeah, I think I think that's what I'm gonna go for. Let's see if I can get two guns. Ah, nope. An ammo well, and an a ammo one shot. There you go. Yep. All right, draw blinding speed and a nimble strike. And how about Susan Don can't play cards? That's pretty good. I'll take it. And I would think a shotgun is a good way to go here. For six damage. Yep. Back the strike. Executioner is just gonna play a trial. Celestial Adjudicator, something. Wait, found wanting. Place card next to a villain target. Not next to a trial if there are no villains. Yeah, so what's going to happen here is these these executioners are going to attack anything next to a trial, so we can put this on Susan Don. Okay. Now there's two of them. 
and now there's two. Oh, and like not in theaters, but another movie that I have watched recently uh, because I bought it for my kids was uh, Jumanji: Welcome to the Jungle, which uh, yeah, was, Jumanji is great. <laughs> which yeah, it was better than I was expecting, and that's awesome because I love the first one. And part of me didn't see it because I was like, oh, I, I love Robin Williams. I love the first one. It's probably going to be garbage, but it was a fun romp. I have to admit. Yeah, Jack Black stole the show. Uh, I think. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, more guns equals more better. More guns, more better. Yeah, and those executioners are just going to wail on Don, so. Yep. I'm just coming around for now. Her with my shotgun. Chill Reef asks, is Celestial Tribunal out yet, or is this a beta build? This is not even a beta build. Yeah, it this is, is an a, internal build. This is an alpha build, as it were. Uh, it's not even yet in beta <laughs> testing. Let's add more tokens. Ooh, I can do turn of events. That seems like fun. Who would like to use a power? Um, everyone gets to use a power. It's just the order. Oh, okay. Sure. Should I go for two guns again? I feel like that didn't work out for me last time. I'm just gonna do Tachyon. Ooh, wait, what do I have? Blinding Speed and Nimble Strike. Ugh, I don't wanna play Blinding Speed. Don't we want those environment cards yeah, well, to keep wailing on her? If you play Nimble Strike, you get to draw a card and it might be something else you wanna play. All right, fine. We'll do this I one. mean, you have to play Lightning Reflex. Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah, have yeah, to play yeah. any cards. And it's up to two, so you can stop. You can stop whenever you want. I can quit whenever I want, man. You're in control. Yeah, then just skip if you want to hold on to them. Yeah, that's fine. About expatriate, shoot a different gun. The Gaza ended looked like an Atari card, and the game looked like an Atari card. That's yeah, that's an interesting autocorrect for sure. Oh, um, um. I would just hit down with the assault rifle or play a card if there's something you want yeah, to Yeah, I'm trying to look. I'm going to see if. Should I do. Yeah, I don't know if you actually have anything useful to play right yeah, now. Yeah, I don't think I do. That's fine. But four damage to Don is pretty good. And I would yep. leave those, those yep. AIs alone. I'm fine with it. Hey, looking up. This is a great setback game doing so good and now Don can deal, deal damage again and we'll be able to play cards again Come on, two guns! Come on! Come on! Ugh. Nope. Didn't work out. What are you gonna do? Seamus Butler, we didn't want to use to shoot all of Expatriate's guns because we don't want to destroy the Citizen Battery. Yeah, Citizen Battery and also the Environment cards are both actually... Though those are helping us right now, so... <coughs> yeah, yeah, it would destroy one of the Executioners who are doing good work for us. 
Yeah, even though they're judging, at points, just keep shooting that shotgun. It's great. Yeah, they're <laughs> judging us, and they are judging well. I appreciate the way Patriot that Patriot is doing 90% of the damage to to the Don. And it's great. I mean, hey, it's a mom and a daughter. That's the way it works. Yep. Sentinel's live, helping me be a better person on Tuesday nights anyway, says Tick Walker. <laughs> we do what we can. Yeah, and those executioners didn't play cards because they're like, oh, I guess we're just going to shoot Sid and Don. She's right. to be executed. Celestial Chamber, at the start of the environment turn, move one Tribunal AI card from the environment trash into play. At the end of the environment turn, if there are no draws in play, play top card in the environment deck. That's going to bring back the Adjudicator. All right, winter comes along. I think we can probably take it as done this round. So if you want to unload, yeah, it's looking like it. Uh, yeah, I don't have that. All right, so we will hit her with this. She'll barely make it out of. Expatriate's turn. Guess we could leave her to the uh, executioners. Seven HP. I had to take out one of the executioners because of that stupid submachine gun, but. That's all right. Oh man, you people, nobody said soon TM. Always oh, set back, set back or do it. Or do we want to wait for, uh, it's up to you. The executioner. Ah, set back and take care of her. Oh, I'm sorry, Citizen Dawn. Have you encountered a slight setback in your plans? Oh look, setback's gonna do ten damage in one shot to Citizen Don. Double high risk behavior is pretty sweet. And terrifying if he gets hit. <laughs> there it is. And there's the Celestial Tribunal just chilling in the background. Nice. Everything is wonderful. All right, it is 827. Are you still game for one more? Sure. All right. We will continue our run in the Celestial Tribunal. And I'm going to randomize. Oh, <laughs> look who I got. What a shock. <laughs> That'll work. Not guilty. The Tribunal kind of looks like the bridge of a guitar. Yeah, not bad. I can see that. All right, John's taking a naturalist. What should I do? Yeah, I'm gonna go uh, Blaze of Glory, setting sun here, and then which bunker do I want? <coughs> yeah, and I'm gonna do Panzer Buster. Panzer Busta! Ooh, and we got an Extreme Prime Warden's Haka and a Hunted Naturalist. This could be interesting. Welcome to Variant Town. Variant Town population, you. I will never let down my guard. Justice must be dispensed to all. Now. I may go out in a blaze of glory, but your evil shall be consumed by purifying fire. Justice is coming to Iron Legacy. From All right. Space. From space. We're judging you, Iron Legacy. Are you a legacy worth keeping around or not? All right. So Ra has got a Fire Blast, Inferno, Scorched Earth, Wrathful Gaze, Hunted Naturals has Bestial Shift, Feral Fury, Indomitable Force, Natural Born Vigor, Bunker, Panza Busta has got uh, Adhesive Foam Grenade, a couple of Grenade Launchers, and a Maintenance Unit, and uh, Haka 
has got a Hacka of Shielding, Punish the Weak, Savage Mana, and Vitality Surge. Show me what you got. Exactly right. Oh my god. All right, so Galvanize comes out first. It's bad. Not great. Real bad. Another Galvanize comes out. Also super <laughs> not great. Demoralizing Presence. Uh, not great. Plus three damage for Legacy. All right. Good times. Are we even going to get to an environment turn? <coughs> All right. Oh, the saddest card in the game. Former allies. Um, yeah, probably Scorched Earth. Scorched Earth would be real good. But that's okay. It's your choice. There are no environment cards in play. At the moment. Yeah, actually, there can't so, be a lot of environment cards in play in this environment. Yeah, that's right, because like some of them like play more cards, right? This is an environment that can get a lot of its card deck really quickly. Yeah, see, this is you know because I haven't played this environment much. Those are things that I just don't know. Super not great. Yep. It's the final countdown. Um, let's see. Yeah, so this is the thing. Like, despite the fact that I have been playing Sentinels and we've been developing Sentinels for, like, half of a decade <laughs> at this point, just about, um, I still need to read a lot of the cards before I know what they are, um, which is very similar to, like, when I play Sil Slay the Spire. I'm constantly rereading every single card as it comes up. I'm like, wait, what does this one do again? And that is the way that I am with Sentinels as well. Ugh, look at all those boosts. It's pretty rough. And we carry on top, deal ourselves damage. All right, let me remind myself what the setting's on. Rod deals each non-hero target and himself two irreducible fire damage. Destroy one of your ongoing cards, remove the top card top two cards of your deck for the tra trash. Whenever we play a card, <laughs> Legacy will hit a, hit them for five damage. Just keep that in mind. Hmm. We need a way to destroy Vigilance, and the only hero we have to destroy ongoing cards is the Naturalist. And do you have that ability right now? Nope. All right. I have three of those cards in my deck that I can dig for. So, so what you're saying is I shouldn't fire blast him right now. I mean, you could fire blast him and he just will <coughs> heal it back on his turn. For, yeah. And you will take five damage and gain no benefit. And probably the same freezing your power. I don't know. Like... We need to get rid of vigilance, or we're. You could you could fire blast and use your power if you want, and he will come out slightly ahead. But he's healing a lot. Yeah. Because of our, dude, we can't get rid of it right now. If you pick up a flame barrier, that would be worth playing. Hmm. Uh. Yeah, I'm not going to play a card. I need to draw four. Hey, Crafty Assault. There it is. Right. So I can get rid of Armor Fortitude and Vigilance. Well, Vigilance and something else, basically. Next go. Hmm. I probably wouldn't play anything here. No, you wouldn't maintenance, maintenance unit and heal? And that will be net minus three hit points. Oh, okay. Hmm. Like, I would rather... I would skip in Panzer Buster Iron Legacy. Alright, that's fine.
<laughs> America's final legacy. Yep. Indeed. It's the final legacy. <laughs> Thank you, Menzer. I'm going to redirect from Bunker. There'll be less damage overall, but it'll still it'll hurt a lot. We'll see. Hey, Representative. And the Representative comes out. All right. Are we letting the chat choose again? Sure. Chat, vote for Representative of Earth. And we can think about ones that would be good. Are there any... I don't know if any... Any hero characters can destroy ongoing cards on their own. All right, we got Dr. three Medico for Dr. Medico. Oh, well, we can pick Dr. Medico then. Are we picking which Dr. Medico? Um, Each of the Sentinels regains one HP and may draw a card. That's not really good. Ability. Yeah, we're, regular we're gonna take regular Medico. <coughs> yeah, base, base, base. All right, yeah. All your base Medico are belong to us. Very good. Ow, God, so many hit points taken away. Ouch. Yep, those boosts are pretty rough. Oof. All oh, right, so Medico has to deal himself damage here under the representative of Earth. Man, crazy. Yeah, it's every hero target. So far, you said, should that have hit Medico? Yes, Medico is a hero target. Hmm. All right, so Vigilance is still out. It will be gone on the Natural's turn. <coughs> it will be gone in, sorry, when? Next turn. Next turn. All right. So... I mean, if you want to start blasting, you can start blasting. It will hurt, though. So. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. I'm like, I've got 14 HP. He's still at 32. Ugh. I think you'd go for it. All right, so so skip play, but then hit him? Is that right, fire blast. Fire, fire blast? blast and hit him. Yeah. All right, fire blast and hit him. All right. We only live once. <laughs> You only live several times in a, in, in a live stream. All right. All right. Moving those cards in the game. All right. Wait, I took I took Nougat Bar's over overused joke. Shoot, I don't know what it was. I wasn't looking at the chat when I said whatever I said. <laughs> Actually, maybe I'll play the rhinoceros first. Let me rewind here. All right. I'll play the rhino. And then I will use my power to Oh, the, all your baser belong to you. Yeah, okay. I see it. Play Crafty Assault. All our base medico are belong to us. And goodbye, Vigilance. Actually, Armored Fortitude is the healing one. The other one gives him a plus one. The healing is pretty annoying. The plus one is also real bad, though. So, 
get rid of the plus one damage. So what's the other legacy? There's there's iron legacy, but then there's like legacy of destruction. Is that a thing? Yeah, that's like, from the reverse universe. The reverse universe, right, right, right. Luminary is from, and whoever from. Right, 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 right. All right, what have I got here? He's probably an ape. No. <coughs> I mean, is keeping him at in irreducible, is that what we're aiming for here the most, or what do we think? Um, if he flips, if we, if we hit him and he flips, then he gets damage reduction, and he only goes after the hero type with the lowest instead, which is nice, instead of hitting everyone. So what we could do is like hit him with grenade launcher this turn and then we flip him and then switch to hitting him with hmm. Panzer Buster next turn. Okay. I don't know if that's a good strategy or not, but Yeah. But we'll oh we go. are actually aren't even gonna get him oh yeah, we won't even get him down to twenty, so it won't make won't actually get there at this time turn, but maybe next turn. I guess Haka yeah, Haka doesn't have any damage. And Haka is going to try to save the representative of Earth. Select a hero character card, Dr. Medico. I could use Haka of Shielding, but I didn't. Celestial Adjudicator. Let's pop that open so that I don't know if we've gone over what that one does. Reduce damage dealt to environment targets by one. At the start of the environment turn, reveal cards from the top of the environment deck until a trial is revealed. Put it into play, discard other revealed cards. And that is a 12 hit point target. Yeah. All right, Haka's going down. That, but he saved Doctor Medico. He did. <laughs> Game over screen. Nope, not yet. It's not over till it's over. All right. Um, uh, man, I have a whole bunch of like really not great options. Um, like you have seven staff. Is there I, you wouldn't play that. Yeah, I'm. That's what I'm looking at. But I'm just like, I don't know how well I'm gonna survive. I mean, you don't have to play the Staff of Ra. Summon Staff is still the best play. It is still the best play, but I'm just looking at all my other options here. Like, I don't know what else I would do other than Summon Staff to get myself 3 HP back and then do my power to, like... Yeah, I mean, I guess, but... Ugh. I mean, I would have probably played Solar Flare, but you do whatever you want. Yeah, this is another one of those situations where John is obviously thinking like four steps beyond what I'm capable of thinking of, so I do appreciate that, but. <coughs> oh, I forgot to mute my cough. Sorry, everybody. You still there? All right, good. Yep. <laughs> You're silently judging me. <laughs> uh, 
I'm going to have the naturalist tank a little bit. Yeah, he's going to flip, so the irreducible effect is probably worth getting going again. Sure. You play Ox Power Source, you can do two <coughs> powers next turn. Yeah, that's what I was just looking at. Like, if I get that out now, then I can do two things next turn, and that's a, that's a thing that I like to do. <laughs> Jeremy has been found wanting. Yes. I know, it took a month for me to come back for you to find me wanting, but here I am. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't figure Legacy would flip, but... Uh, uh, if I make Haka a zero HP target, then Iron Legacy will go after. Aka, which is interesting. Mm. Uh, we can also keep him from healing, though, with this other effect. So I'm going to do that right now. Because the naturalist is going to redirect damage that goes toward Haka anyway, so it's no point to that. The Paragon of Sentience. Play this card next to a hero character card. Not next to a trial. If there are no valid targets, to discard this card. If the target next to this card leaves, play destroy the card. When this card is destroyed, play the top card of the environment deck. I guess Bunker might be the most likely to survive. And Iron Legacy is found wanting. Indeed, he is. Uh. Goodbye, naturalist. And the naturalist. You did your job. Naturalist out. All right. Uh, discards four well, cards. It doesn't matter what you discard. You're gonna get killed by Iron Legacy in a second. All right. All right, it's all on Bunker. I think that 10 damage attack is probably a good idea. All right, one hero. One player may either draw or play a card. One hero deals one target. 10 irreducible fire damage removed raw from the game. Destroy each non-hero target with four or fewer HP. All right, so what you're saying is this one, the deal one target, 10 irreducible, remove raw from the game. Yeah, that yeah. takes him down to 10. And have Bunker do it so he gets Nemesis bonus. Goodbye, Ra. Wah, wah, wah. All right, Naturalist. One player may draw a card, one player may play a card, or the environment target with the highest HP of these each non-hero target to melee damage. Yeah, we can have that... Uh... Adjudicator attack. That's probably the best thing now. And then Bunker can. I could have Bunker draw. But Bunker could draw like external combustion, but that would be four damage. That would be better. But I, I don't think it's. What do you think? Would I guess so? There'd be two damage. He'd be down to seven, and then you can use grenade launcher. That'll be like three damage. He'd be down to four. And then if he doesn't heal and doesn't kill bunker, then Ra could destroy a Ra's gone. So that would yeah. Work, but external combustion would get two more, two more damage, which could do it. Yeah. I think having this sure two damage is better though than. Yeah, 
Probably. You could go into turret mode actually on your turn and get a plus one from that. So let's do this. Yeah, James Butler says turn mode for plus one damage. Yes, yeah, so you don't actually need to destroy this if you're going to go in turn mode. All right, so am I making him irreducible and then hitting with a grenade launcher? Yep. Yeah, all right. Down to three, so if, a, if yeah, those things don't do damage at the start of their turn. So, you can hit her if you want, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yes, I, I actively chose not to do damage. <laughs> Alert the media. Ugh. Yeah, if I make Haka the zero HP target, then Iron Legacy will attack Haka, which is good. But the problem is Iron Legacy will regain like nine hit points. So I'm going to do that thing. There it goes. Uh, I don't know why the game is continuing. <laughs> why keep playing things? All right, there we go. That's a bug. Uh, this is why this is not even in beta yet. But still in alpha because there are yeah. so many things that can go wrong with this particular environment. Bugs. But we wanted to show it off. We wanted to start showing it off because it has been so long since you folks have seen new content and it was getting close and we thought, why not show them some stuff? We know that they're excited. We know that we love these people and we want them to see some stuff. And I'm back after a month. So why not have it be a cool special occasion? All right, so, uh, yeah, I think that is going to do it for another episode of Sentinels Live. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you for checking out the episodes, even when I wasn't here. I know that 99% of you come here just because you love me so much, but I appreciate you watching John and all the co-hosts, even though you didn't really want to. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, Sentinels of the Multiverse is currently available for, um, what was it available for? iOS, Android... PC, Mac, and Linux via Steam, etc., etc., and always in good old analog cardboard and ink. If you like the show, please do like, share, follow, and subscribe. Uh, you can find more info and download the free demo at sentinelsdigital.com. Uh, I'm excited to be back. As far as I know, I should be back every Tuesday from this point forward for at least a while now. Um, unfortunately, we will not be at PAX East this weekend, um, but we will be at Momocon. Um, we're going to be at Momocon in Atlanta at the end of May, showing off one deck dungeon. So if you're in or around the Atlanta area, uh, come and say hi. Um, we'll probably be putting out a call for some helpers, maybe, uh, to help us with the booth. Uh, me and Krista will be there. Uh, but we're probably going to need a couple people to help us run the booth for um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's like a three and a half day show. It starts Thursday in like in the afternoon. Uh, but anyway, so that's MomoCon. We won't be at PAX East. So it's actually, I was just telling Krista, this is the first PAX East I have not been to since probably 2011, I think. Which is kind of a bummer because I do love PAX East and I love Boston. But what are you going to do? All right, um, so I think that's going to do it. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I'm Jeremy. Joining me, as always, is John. 
John, coming at us from Portugal, Lisbon, Portugal. Lisbon, Portugal this week. This week. And another, well, I'll still be in Lisbon until the, until <coughs> later in April. So. All right. And hopefully the internet will be a little more reliable. We'll see. We will see. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.